Hello there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You are joining me in a series um, called Musings from a Monk, and it's thoughts from a book that Jeremy Driscoll, a monk at uh, the monastery Mount Angel Abbey in St. Benedict, Oregon, has put together, um, and he basically takes some of his thoughts through the perspective of um, the lens of the life he leads as a monk and offers us some insight. And so I thought this might be something interesting to share with you, and I hope you enjoy it. A is for Anselmo. When I think of the many kinds of pain and tragedy that people are suffering and that we hear about every day, Wars, random violence, floods, earthquakes, painful deaths from diseases, accidents. And when I think of lives interrupted and cut short, and then the pain for those who love them and are left behind, I am struck by how, comparatively speaking, such pain is not approached especially near to me. Even if it seems I feel rather deeply the pain in in others that I hear about. Then parallel to this is the beauty that I see and hear about. Wonderful things and wonderful people in the world. Day after day, glorious stories. Perhaps the view from my room here in Rome at the Monastery of St. Anselmo is an emblem for for all of this. For nearly 3,000 years, we know of people living on this same space of land. So much sorrow, so much death has seeped into the ground on which my monastery now stands. And yet so much beauty as well. And the ever-renewing springtime, with its cleansing rains and its warming sun. Right now, in the evening twilight, I am looking out on houses where great happiness and great sorrow are unfolding. For the moment in my personal life, I am between the two, and that too is a position to be lived. I want to live it prayerfully, thoughtfully, that is without knowing the details. I want to be in communion with whoever it is that is out there, to suffer with them, to enjoy with them, and doing it from here, from this one window, with these people whoever they are. I want to join myself to the whole history of my race, to the history of my times, and thereby to the history of other times. I want the life of Christ and the mind of Christ to be strong in me, so that my quietly being here, even apparently not especially involved, might in fact be a sort of port of entry for Christ into our spaces and our times. Then I will have served a purpose, randomly perhaps, like some accidental death, but a purpose nonetheless. A is for Ascent of the Hill. My monastery is on a hill. That makes quite a difference. All of us who live on the hill have come up and down it many times, but every ascent up the hill recalls on a sliding scale between subconscious and conscious, the first time this upward climb was ever made. That first time was filled with a dizzying range of emotions. For a person comes to live on this hill in order to seek God and is inevitably and all at once excited by the adventure, ready for the dedication and afraid that his strength may not match the hope. To turn the corner at the bottom of the hill and start the ascent is to turn a corner in life. As you climb upward rather steeply and enter quickly into the tall bank of trees, a separation from a life left behind has quickly affected. The trees are splendid, beautiful, tall, They are like a word from God that whispers and waves a message over you. You are in a new place, they say, and life will be different here. The climb 
is a passage, a space that must be come through in order to teach what you have come for in the first place. The monastic wisdom that points away toward God. The actual physical ascent here is an indistinct combination of both steep and gentle. And so also is the way toward God. Although this is not the climb of a rugged mountain or a sheer cliff, it nonetheless requires some effort. But an effort that is paced and ultimately modest. At the top, you suddenly come into the open, and it's beyond. The church, the monastery, the other buildings gathered around the green, and the views in every direction to the valley and to the mountains close and far behind. An inexpressible fullness fills the heart. A place has clearly been established here, Something is definitely going on. For the passage I have made, for my ascent, I am invited in. I am bid to share in it. I feel peace and I want to be a part. A place and the lives that unfold in a place in inevitably impenetrate, interpenetrate. And that is a reciprocal exchange between them such that each composes the other and accompanies the other. Affection grows. Monks love their place and the place loves its monks. As the years of my searching for God in this place pass, I love the place more and more because progressively its features and details are gathered inside my story. This love stirs in me with every ascent or descent of the hill. If I go down the hill, I am on my way elsewhere, and I feel the difference as I descend. If my absence is to be a long one, the emotion of leaving what I love is more sharply borne. On returning from afar, however far, it is in the start of the ascent that I know I am returned home. In the short time it takes to mount upward to the top, all the complicated emotions of what it means to live in this place flash through me and resolve themselves in the climb. Well, I hope that you are enjoying this series. Make sure and share this with someone you think would be encouraged by it. And if you're interested in taking a poetry class with me, go ahead and check out my classes over on www.udemy.com. Mm-hmm.